This web clip summarizes a neuropsychological study of moral judgment involving patients with prefrontal brain damage. My name is Mike Koenigs. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Now, of course, the most famous case of prefrontal brain damage is that of Phineas Gage. The case of Phineas Gage showed us clearly that the medial prefrontal cortex plays a critical role in regulating our social and moral behavior. In this study, we're focusing specifically on a subregion of the medial prefrontal cortex, the ventromedial PFC. This is an area of the brain above and between the eyes. For this study, we assembled a group of neurological patients with focal damage involving the VMPFC. So you can see among these six individual patients, their lesions are outlined in red. The lesions arise in these cases from the resection of uh, tumors growing in this area of the brain or from subarachnoid hemorrhage resulting from the rupture of a communicating anterior communicating artery aneurysm. And what you can appreciate in these patients are no two lesions are identical, um, but in every case uh, the damage includes the VMPFC in both, both hemispheres. This is a lesion overlap map demonstrating the area of uh, the brain that is damaged in, in, in all of these patients. So here the hotter colors indicate uh, more overlap or the same, the same area of damage among the six patients. And so you can see here that all six of the patients have damage that includes the VMPFC in both hemispheres. And so any abnormality or deficit or impairment that we see uh, in this group of patients, we're going to uh, infer that that abnormality or deficit is caused by VMPFC damage, uh, and hence that VMPFC is critical uh, for the impaired or abnormal function. Throughout history, a number of deep thinkers have weighed in on the question of what is the basis of human morality or human moral judgment. At one point in the 17th century, the debate crystallized around the question of whether the morality was the product of reason or of emotion. So Immanuel Kant said that all our knowledge, including our moral knowledge, begins with the senses, proceeds then to the understanding, and ends with reason. There is nothing higher than reason. So in other words, in any situation, if you want to know what is the morally right thing to do, all one needs to do is uh, employ our superior reasoning abilities and um, through that process we can figure out what is the morally right action. David Hume disagreed. He said flatly the rules of our morality are not the conclusion of reason but rather reason is and ought to be the slave of the passions. So in other words <coughs> our moral judgments result from a intuitive or emotional sense of right and wrong and reason um, can only play the role of a post hoc rationalization for what we feel in our gut to be the right or wrong thing to do. So how do we test this experimentally? Um, we use a thought experiment that's been developed by philosophers and moral psychologists. <coughs> and the thought experiment is known as the trolley paradox. It works like this. So you imagine that you're this individual uh, in the blue pants and red shirt there. And what you're witnessing, to your horror, is a trolley barreling down these train tracks. And you realize if you do nothing, this trolley is going to proceed to its right and kill these five unsuspecting workmen. However, you're standing next to a switch in the track. If you pull the switch, the trolley will switch tracks and instead of killing the five unsuspecting workmen, will kill the one unsuspecting workman. And so if you ask neurologically and psychiatrically healthy individuals, uh, in this case, is it the morally right thing to do to pull this switch, the vast majority of the people will say yes, pull the switch. Um, kill the one instead of the five. Um, so in other words, uh, this is a simple arithmetic problem. So in this case, our moral judgment, uh, what is the right thing to do here, seems to be based uh, purely on a uh, calculation of outcomes based on arithmetic. However, now consider this um, slightly more ridiculous hypothetical scenario where instead of standing next to a train, uh, a switch next to the train track, you're standing on a bridge over the track next to this very large stranger. 
Again, you realize if you do nothing, this train will go down the track and kill these five unsuspecting workmen. However, if you push this stranger off the bridge in front of the trolley, um, he will die, he will be crushed by the train, but these five uh, workmen will be saved. If you ask people, again, is it the morally right thing to do to push this stranger to his death, uh, most people will say no. And the question is, what is different about these two scenarios? So it seems in both cases, uh, the math is the same, right? So you can sacrifice one person to save five. So why are people uh, less likely to endorse pushing the stranger in the footbridge scenario? And the idea that the philosophers have come up with is that this uh, scenario includes an emotionally aversive personal harm that the, uh, that, the, that the switch in the track scenario does not include, and that this um, can in fact influence human moral judgment. All right, so by way of terminology, um, a utilitarian decision reflects uh, that only the consequences matter. So a utilitarian mindset would have you push the stranger to his death. Uh, in contrast, any other decision would be non-utilitarian. This recognizes that other considerations matter. For example, our emotional aversion to um, pushing a fellow human to his death. Um, and in these cases, uh, we, would, we would not push the stranger. So by way of a testable hypothesis, if the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is indeed critical for imbuing our moral judgment with uh, emotion, and if emotion is a, is a critical factor in determining our moral judgments, then we might expect that these ventromedial lesion patients, so patients like Phineas Gage who have exhibited a striking lack of, um, of emotion and social regard for others, uh, would be abnormally utilitarian in their judgment. And so we gave uh, subjects in this study a series of these hypothetical scenarios that involve this uh, this sticky decision. Would you uh, commit a direct personal harm, sacrifice one person in order to save a greater number of others? So here's a example of a stimulus for this study. So again, the decision to smother the child in this case would be considered a utilitarian choice. So here are the data from the study. On the y-axis or vertical axis, you're seeing the percentage of utilitarian response. So this is saying, yeah, push the stranger, yeah, smother the baby. On the x-axis are the different patient groups in the study. Um, the ventromedial lesion patient group is the, is the target. Um, so first off, Neurologically and psychiatrically healthy individuals, um, by and large, are, are fairly reluctant to to push the stranger, smother the baby, make those utilitarian choices. As are neurological patients with focal lesions outside the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. However, the VMPFC lesion patients are more than twice as likely to endorse the utilitarian response. This result, I suspect, would please David Hume, as it indicates that damage to the area of the brain that seems to be critical for generating certain kinds of emotions like guilt and empathy um, is in fact, this area of the brain is in fact critical for moral judgment.